Welcome to another episode of uh, Underprepared. And today we're going to go through one of your cases, John. Uh, let's go straight into it. It was a lower left six that we're yeah, talking about. Absolutely. This was uh, a patient recently presented to me. She was uh, a youngish patient, sort of early 30s, who had had this tooth, this lower left six, presented with a little bit of uh, discomfort from it and told me she'd had this root treated uh, 10 years ago. Mm. And clearly looking at the, the radiograph here, you know, it's not exactly your classical root filling that you're seeing here. No, it's quite, quite, quite a deep uh, pop capping, I would say. But uh, looking at the image, what, what are the things that you're looking at for this case? What, what are you thinking that's going to make it easy, difficult? What are your challenges here? Uh, so we always go top down. So looking at the restoration, what was going on, obviously with a, this case, we'll see in the clinical photo in a second, this was a, had a failing restoration. I'm then having a look, seeing how accessible the root canals are going to be. Has the anatomy been respected the first time round? Mm -hmm. Is my chance of getting to the end of the roots pretty good? We've got a fairly sizable periodical radiolucency here. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking we're going to have a well-established um, bacterial microflora here. So you know, we're going to have to prepare this well. We're going to have to irrigate and clean this well. We've got a few challenges here, but ultimately I, I thought this was a case worth taking on. Okay. And the material that they use in the pub chamber, anything that you might suspect? So here we're looking at it. I mean, for me, again, I look at this and I think, well, this could be a restorative material. Mm -hmm. It could be something like cows and all. Um, it could be a, a paste medicament, which we'll see it, it was. So <laughs> we, we see this uh, in teeth that perhaps were treated quite heavily in the 80s, yeah. stuff like SPAD, endomethazone, these sorts of paste yeah. root fillings are, uh, are often giving that sort of appearance on the radiograph. Good. And as you mentioned, there's a, this is the clinical picture. I know you've got the rubber dam on already, but it's quite useful to look at this from a clinical perspective. So what, looking at this tooth, what is your assessment? What are you looking for? Uh, what could be difficult and what are you going to be looking for later on in terms of treatment completion? So again, it's that question initially is, is this tooth worth hanging on to? Um, we've got a young patient, so I'm more inclined to say yes, I'd like yeah. to keep it. And then restoratively, what's it going to look like? And the only way we're going to know that really is to strip out the old dentistry, mm -hmm. clean the caries, see what we've got left. And that's exactly what we did here. So we took the, the restoration out. Mm -hmm. Also prior to that, we like to get these cone beam scans taken. Yeah. Um, the benefit of this is, uh, I mentioned it earlier, is to have a look at the accessibility of these root canals. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, with the coronal slice at the top, you can see we've got a narrowish mesolingual. You can see there's a tiny white speck there, which yeah. is just that hint of the, the paste material that was there. And the distal is a more of a wide uh, ribbon-shaped canal, but we can see on the apical slice just below it, that sort of morphed into one mm. more conical-shaped uh, root filling at the end, and the same with the mesials. Having a look at the coronal slice, what strategies are you thinking of in terms of uh, potential, I'm thinking more instrumentation, obturation, irrigation, when you look at these coronal slices. We like CBCTs because mm. it sort of uh, gives you a roadmap of going forward. Uh, but are you thinking something differently w with the shape of the root canal, depending on what you see? Uh, yeah, I, I think if the, particularly if we take mesial roots on lower molars, they often have that flat morphology. So for me, I'm looking at utilizing uh, an instrumentation system that's going to be a bit more delicate mm -hmm. in that preparation. Yeah. I'm not a big fan, and I know you're not a big fan of stripping teeth out, um, but I'm still going to look at instrumentation here, particularly that's going to have uh, the ability to create some mm -hmm. apical form and shape because I want to be really comfortable and confident that I can exchange irrigant here. So I'm mm -hmm. looking for something that's going to prepare apically but preserve coronally. Nice, that's very good. Um, and, and this is you taking the restoration out. I mean, we, we go on about a little bit, restoration out, cusps down. And I think, how, what's your thought process here? So I strip out the old filling first, really, really simply, just using a bog standard flattened cylinder burr, really, yes. really simple, uh, medium grip. Uh, then I set about removing the caries and typically will work, work from the periphery. Mm -hmm. So clearing as much of the peripheral caries as we can. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll have a look and see, you know, whether we look here, we've got caries under that mesobuccal cusp. That's going to fracture left as it is. So what we will also do is reduce that mesobuccal cusp by a couple of millimeters, um, which we can see here. 
So you can see that peripheral cleanup. We've got the cusp reduced. Makes my life easier. Mm. So I've got a shorter tooth. I've got a tooth that's less likely to break at the end of it. Uh, and we can see now that we've got that sort of paste root filling in yeah. the middle. We can start thinking about removing that. At this stage, do you think about what restoration is going to go on later on? So do you prepare, do you ready the tooth for your future restoration now? I, th I think you certainly could do. It's slightly different for us in referral practice in that we will be thinking about, you know, the core build-up here yeah. and handing that back to the referring dentist. But I think if you were, you know, working, doing this end-to-end, -end, yeah. you could be thinking at this stage, well, okay, if I've got a decent bit of mesial enamel here, you can certainly see we've mm. got it all the rest of the way around. Onlay restoration could work well. That digital workflow that we've talked about recently, yeah. that single visit, um, onlay um, endodontic workflow would work beautifully, potentially for this, although yeah. measly we were reasonably deep here. Yeah, absolutely. That's really nice. That's um, I think the things I pick up on what you said is that reducing the cusps avoids the risk of fracturing the tooth yeah. in between appointments, uh, potentially, and also making your life easier because you've got slightly flatter cusps for measuring and a shorter tooth because it was a relatively long tooth. So those are two really good points, actually. And what are we looking at here? So I think we're looking at, uh, well, we're looking at a paste root filling. Mm. So I'm thinking it's probably spad or end endometazone. So these uh, are very outdated and old school uh, paste root fillings. I'll remove this using yeah. Pison Scalar. Fine. Um, very simply, so I'm using the, the CAP tip, the number three tip from Action. Yeah. Um, and just blast it. It breaks yeah. it up. And it's also relatively conservative in that process. Yeah. I think it's helpful to have the P's on. We, I mean, we use the, the P5 from Action, but it's good because you can have water on, water off. Mm -hmm. So you can uh, dig a little bit and then clean it straight away with the water. That's, that's really handy. And, and then you, you carried on your preparation. So what did you use in this case? So this was prepped, uh, as many of our cases are, with True Anatomy. Okay. Um, so the rationale, as I stated earlier, really is that it allows apical preparation coronal preservation and actually this was prepared all of the canals were prepared to uh true anatomy mediums mm -hmm. so that's a thir size 36 at the tip nice. so although we've got quite in inverted commas skinny preparations mm -hmm. we have got that deeper shape apically which you know, for those that are uh, very keen to see that which we see in a lot of the file system you can achieve that with the true anatomy system and you can achieve that with a lot of the um, yeah. dentine preservation systems as well it's just this this kind of idea that because it's narrower coronally it's not doing the job apically whereas actually a lot of these file systems they can yeah. do that and were the measles joining here yeah they did on this mm. particular case yes, so thanks. again you've got to work carefully in the preparation phase so making sure as you're going down mesolingual, mesobuccal, mm. uh, you're not blocking at that confluence. So typically for me, I'll prep the mesolingual first. Okay. It's a little bit straighter. Um, and then I'll bring the mesobuccal around. Mm. That, that tends to be my typical approach to lower molars. How do you know where to prep if they join? So invariably, you end up um, prepping both of them. Fine. And okay. you just really carefully um, checking you've got patency, making sure you haven't mm. blocked loads and loads of irrigation. And even then with the irrigation, you may be activating it a little bit more yeah. during the shaping process, i.e. moving that fluid. And irrigation-wise, what's the protocol normally for these teeth? So hypo throughout, and then uh, coming to the end, it's EDTA, mm -hmm. activate, flush with EDTA, hypochlorite, activate, flush with hypochlorite. Really? Done. What do you use to activate? In uh, so in this case, I use the Eddy. Thanks. I love the Eddy. It's a air sonic scalar sonic agitation plastic yeah. tip and i quite like that particularly you've got mm. joining canals you, so you're less to, yeah. to, to block stuff it's really nice actually and uh, this is you towards the end of the appointment yeah uh, i take it and also to note uh, it's not just for the for the photos but i quite like the fact that you've got um a nice quadrant isolation yeah. which allows you to do both the end and the restorative at the same time so not just for endo but if you're doing restorative and caries removal having a quadrant is uh, is definitely beneficial. Um, and I think you took this photo to show us a bit that now you need to think about the restorative aspect. Yeah, 100%. So I'm thinking I want to build this up with composite, uh, distally, no bother, but measly we had quite hmm. a, a deepish margin there. So actually getting that um, band to fit 
and then getting a good adaptation of a wedge. I like to get a wooden wedge. I'm very yeah. old fashioned. I like a wooden wedge in there. Mm -hmm. um, will fit really, really nicely to, to kind of splay that out. But sometimes if you have the wood and wedge kind of conventionally in there, you end up with that deformation of the band at the, yeah. the, the base and you don't get that really nice emergence coming out from it. And I think this is what you often do is because you use the wooden wedge and it does wedge in and splay things you modify it so yeah. that you didn't deform the band that you just said. And so what, what are you trying to do here with your, these modifications? So in essence, you're making the wooden wedge um, slightly flatter so that it will sit across the base of the cavity and where the burr is there is designed so it's got that sort of, you know, as it sort of humps over the alveolar yeah. crest, you've got a bit of the space for it. And, you know, we know um, Chris O'Connor and Ollie Bailey and Alan Berg and the guys yeah. from Incidental, they run a brilliant course yeah. And this is something you know we we picked up from these guys, mm -hmm. and it's been really instrumental in us managing these very deep um, cavity configurations. You know, yeah, really, really helpful. That's nice. And then that one goes in between the teeth with this is a standard Pro Matrix that yeah. you've used, and uh, nothing too fancy, no. even for you, restorative, yeah. restorative endodontist. Absolutely. Um, what did you use in this case for restoring the tooth? Because this is a beautiful picture that uh, you often show where everything's glistening and it's clean. And I think this is what we try and reinforce. You've cut the GP just below the orifice level. Yeah. So it's nice and clean. And um, you, we tend to etch and bond. We tend to clean our cavities with alcohol yeah. because we use epoxy resin based uh, mm -hmm. sealer. So we just want it really looking good. And I think if you, every time you take a photo, it's quite good to see because you then look at the, the screen and you think, <laughs> That's not clean, yeah. um, but this just shows. We just want you to to, to see how clean um, the cavity uh, should be. Okay. Yeah, and I think that is so critical for coronal seal because you can't. It doesn't matter what bonding system you use, you can't bond to GP, and you're not going to bond to sealer that is covered mm -hmm. all over the pulpal floor. Yeah. And we tend to go composite straight into yeah. GP, don't we? And then, so what do you use in this case for restoring it? So this is built up with a dual cure resin. So this is Corex Flow. Mm. Um, very, very simply, you know, the etch bond protocol is done as, as standard. And then we place the Corex Flow, the dual cure composite, all in one increment. And then we sit and wait <laughs> and we let it chemically cure. So typically this cures for about a minute and a half, two minutes. Yeah. And then you do the final cure because, you know, you're not going to get that complete polymerization without that final light cure on a dual cure. Yeah. And I, I love this approach because it's just dead easy. Mm. You can see here there is, this isn't going to win any awards for composite carving. No, you never know. <laughs> it's, got to, it's got a point contact. There's yeah. not a lot of overbuilding. So lateral excursions, it's not taking a huge amount of hits. This is going to go for a crown pretty yeah. soon. Um, you, do want, you do want to keep everything nicely uh, sealed in but without putting too much strain and there's actually good evidence to show that if you don't have too high uh, an occlusion or too heavy a contact it can inc uh, improve your post-operative um, pain so yeah. we tend to leave them just point contact if you have someone who who's had some trouble with pulpitis we tend to even take it out of occlusion ever so slightly it's better um, after after treatment and this is our uh, this is your final trophy yeah okay um, so tell me what, what do you see? What, what, are, what would be your final parting thoughts about this case? Well, I think, you know, it's, it's gone pretty well. I think we've achieved what we want to achieve, which is getting to the end of the roots, finding all the root canals, getting a decent bit of cleaning in there. And the thing I really like about this, so you wouldn't, looking at this radiograph, you wouldn't mm. think that's prepped to a 36 apically. Mm. Because traditionally, if we're going to prep to that kind of apical size, you often have to see mm. more of a uh, heavy preparation appearance coronally. So I, I like the mesial here, how we've preserved that early curvature. Yes. Uh, that triangle of dentine that we get told so often to brush, brush, brush out the way um, is still there. And I think that's quite important for the long-term yeah. rigidity here. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with the outcome. Uh, but only time is going to tell whether this is going to resolve and heal. True. Well, John, thank you very much for walking us through your case. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that and if you have any particular case you'd like us to, to discuss, uh, please let us know. We'll be more than happy to go through them. See you next time. Bye for now.